Hey, 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 foodie friends. Welcome to Chef's Recipe Spotlight with Jessica Ann, where we do what we do best, and that is talk about food. And today, we have a treat for you. You know that I am gaga over anything potatoes. If I was given one ingredient to work with, like main ingredient to work with for the rest of my life, it would be potatoes. There's so many of them, so many varieties, and they're like a blank slate waiting to be painted with deliciousness. Um, they're just so good. I love potatoes. Anyway, and I'm a firm believer that they are a vegetable, not a starch. So get on board with me. I hope you are looking at a picture of these crispy home fries right now, because if you are, you are here, you are drooling, and you are ready to go into your kitchen or go to the grocery store to buy potatoes to make them ASAP. One would think making home fries is a really simple process, and it is, it honestly is, but there is some chemistry and science behind it that can make you have outstanding crunchy little cubes instead of just, yeah, some are good, some are bad, diner style home fries, okay? So I'm going to give you the tips and the tricks to make these outstanding, delicious home fries that are quite honestly worthy of an entire meal themselves. So the first thing you want to do is choose the best type of potato. And not all potatoes are created equal. They're all created lovely, but they're not all good for the same purposes. So here we want something super starchy, like a russet potato. They are starchier, and therefore they're going to crisp up on the outside while leaving a creamy interior. Something that's more waxy, like a red potato or a new potato fingerlings, creamy potatoes, the creamer, sorry, potatoes aren't going to do as well. If you can't find a russet, an Idaho is the second best bet. You do not have to peel the potatoes if you don't want to. The crunch can come on the skin, and honestly, the skin holds a lot of nutrients in it. So you might want, want to take those off. It won't be like a regular baked potato. You won't have to like nah, 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 chew it up. Okay. So we've got russet potatoes. We have baking soda. So this is one of my tips here is baking soda. So baking soda makes the water more alkaline. We are going to parboil the potatoes. It's called the double cook method. This makes sure that we get them creamy on the inside, but crunchy on the outside. Anyway, baking soda is optional, but I highly recommend it. Vegetable oil or another neutral oil with a super high smoke point because we don't want it to burn. We're going to keep that oil or try to right around 350, but we want to make sure that it, it's not a lower one. Okay. We want to also make sure that we have unsalted butter. Using butter and oil together, make sure that you get the butter flavor, but the oil prevents the butter from burning. I know that sounds like a lot, but you know, it is what it is. So onion and garlic. Most home fries only use onion, but uh, you know me and garlic. So here it is. It's it's here in this recipe. And I actually cook mine separately from the potatoes. Why? Because onion cooks faster than the potatoes are going to cook. And garlic cooks even faster than the onions are going to cook. So we're going to cook those separate, put them in a separate pan, and then put it all together at the very end. And last is seasoned salt. Of course, you can go get yourself some Lowry's or some other seasoned salt that you enjoy, or you can make your own. I have a wonderful recipe that uses salt, white pepper, smoked paprika, onion powder, and garlic powder. And uh, it's just perfection. So what you'll also need to grab is a pan. I want a heavy bottom skillet with preferably the most surface space as you can possibly get so that you have the most potato making contact with that hot pan. Okay. So we are going to prep the potatoes by scrubbing them well. We are going to boil them. And if there's any dirt on the outside, you're just going to have mud water. And that's pretty gross. Start cutting them up into half inch cubes or bite sized cubes. The, the, the actual size doesn't really matter that much as long as they're, they're all uniform. If they're a uniform shape, then they're going to cook at the same speed. And that is more important than the actual size. Okay, peeling them, not necessary, but if you don't like the skins, go ahead and peel them, fine by me, okay? Place the potatoes into a large Dutch oven, large pot, cover them with cold water. They are going to start there as, as the water comes up to a boil. And this is when you add the baking soda. You only need about one teaspoon to change the uh, alkaline content of the water. So when it boils, cover the pot, sorry, cover the pot, bring it to a full boil, and then remove the lid and stir it. Cook it for another one to two minutes. The potatoes are small, so it won't take long for them to be tender. Just 
dip a fork in there and check it. And if it can spear on the fork easily without any resistance, they're done, right? And they're double cooked, remember? So you're gonna cook them again if they aren't fully cooked. They might start to break apart a tad and that's fine. In fact, it actually is better if the exterior of them is roughed up a bit. It brings out the starch and that's gonna help with the crunch when we fry them. Okay, drain the potatoes in a colander, tap out any excess water. I actually will let mine sit there for about a half an hour just to make sure all the water is out of it. Get them as dry as possible. It's kind of the same concept as a steak or a chicken. If we want good browning, then we really wanna start with a dry as possible exterior. Okay, so next step is to heat some of the oil, not all of the oil, part of oil and part of the butter in a large skillet. We're gonna work in batches. This is a don't crowd the pan kind of situation. But before we even start with the potatoes, we're gonna start with the onions, just the onions, leave the garlic out for now. So add the, gut, the onions to the oil and the butter, saute them around until they're fragrant. We're looking for sauteed onions so they keep that oniony taste but not caramelized so they get sweet. Okay, about when they start to turn a little bit brown, that's when we're gonna add the garlic in. The garlic only needs about one minute. Take those out using a slotted spoon, leave their flavors and any leftover oil or butter into the pan. Keep it hot. Okay, so now we're gonna start adding the potatoes and you're gonna have to work in batches here if you have a lot of potatoes, but that really depends on how many potatoes you have. Add them in a single layer, don't let them crowd too much. I don't want them stacked on top of each other. What happens if they're stacked on top of each other is that they start to steam and steam prohibits that crispity, crunchy exterior you are working so hard to achieve. Allow them to brown easily, resist the urge to move them around constantly. Use a spatula and flip them. Do not stir them, okay? And do this several times until you start to see that golden exterior on them. Remove each batch to a plate. It can even be the same plate as the onions and the garlic if you don't wanna dirty something else up or put those in a bowl. That can even be your serving bowl and repeat until all of those potatoes are cooked. Okay, add the potatoes, the onions, the garlic, everything back into the skillet just to reheat it all, and then sprinkle it with the seasoned salt, toss it all together, and then guys, you're ready to go. Serve it with your favorite breakfast food. You can make these ahead of time, but if you're gonna reheat them, I really encourage you to do it in a skillet. Do not microwave them, that steams them. They will not have the same crisp or crunch to them. They make an excellent hash. You can make them into animal fries. We've got a pulled pork hash we love, a sausage hash, corned beef hash. You can use them for garbage plates if you've never had a garbage plate. Of course, for potatoes, O'Brien, something along that. Um, you can even make them into some sort of a casserole instead of using hash browns for a casserole with ground beef or bacon or pork, right? Okay, as always, we hope to give you culinary inspiration. We wanna hear your thoughts, comments, experience, tips, and tricks. Leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast podcast where you listen and of course to our newsletter so you get all of our new YouTube videos and recipes that come out weekly. From my kitchen to yours, stay, stay crispy. Let's say stay crispy for this one. Bye foodie friends.